Hello everyone, welcome to our Astro Life. My name is Abdur and today I'm going to show you how to image the International Space Station. So this video is part of my three-part video series and uh, this one will cover tips and tricks for imaging the International Space Station. Part two is a practical demo and part three will be tips and tricks on how to process your data. Now, uh, the reason I decided to make these tutorials is because a few days ago I had posted an image of the International Space Station that I had taken uh, on a Facebook group and that got a lot of attention and I had a lot of questions from people about, uh, about how to go about taking a picture of the ISS. So I decided to make a tutorial uh, so anyone who wants to try it as well can uh, uh, see exactly how it's done. So right after I had taken and posted that picture, I got another chance to take a shot of the ISS and this time I decided to use a Barlow lens as well. And the results actually turned out quite a bit better. So uh, I was using a Celestron C8 uh, Schmidt Cassegrain, a Fuji X-T2 camera in 4K video mode, and I was using a manual Altaz mount for this picture. And turns out you can see quite a bit of detail uh, on this object, uh, despite the fact that it was about 560 kilometers away at the time. And uh, now the International Space Station moves at about 27,000 kilometers an hour or about 17,000 miles per uh, hour. So it is too fast for most mounts to actually track. So uh, I ended up using a manual mount in this case, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. But the first thing that you have to do is actually find the ISS. And you can find out when the ISS will be passing over your city by going to spotthestation.nasa.gov. And we're going to do that uh, right now. I'm just going to open up a window, Internet Explorer window. So we'll go to spotthestation.nasa.gov and now you just have to enter in the name of the city that you're in so in my case it was Edmonton, Alberta when you do that it pulls up the city and you'll see a couple of these little marks above the city so just select the one that's closest to your city and click view sighting opportunities now down here it's going to show you all the passes that the ISS is going to make around your location uh, a few days before and after the current date and time. So when I was uh, imaging the International Space Station that second time, uh, that was January 30th at 6.37 p.m. That was the closest pass and the ISS would be visible for three minutes. The maximum height would be 57 degrees and it would appear in the west-southwest and it would be moving east-southeast. Now the only information that you need is the date and time. So January 30th, 6.37 p.m. in that case, and the direction that it's going to be appearing from. So I'll make note of that, January 30th, 6.37 p.m. And we'll go back. Now the second thing you need to do is you need to download this free program, Stellarium or if you have an app that tells you where uh, the International Space Station is going to appear or any kind of planetarium app uh, such as Sky Safari, you could use that as well. But I prefer to use Stellarium on my desktop and on my phone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up Stellarium. And once I have Stellarium open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the time to the time that the ISS was going to be visible. So that's January 30th, 6.37 p.m. So I'm going to move my cursor to the right-hand part of the screen right over here. Uh, click on the date and time window. And January 30th at 6.39 p.m., so that's 18.39. Uh, yep, 18, 18.37 actually was the time. There we go, so 6.37 p.m. or 18.37. And I'm going to look in the west-southwest direction where it's going to be appearing from. So we switch back to Stellarium, 6.37 p.m. 
And what I'm going to do actually is just go down to the right part of the screen here and click on this button to stop the flow of time. And then we look at South, West, South. Right there, you can see the International Space Station moving. Now, as I move the seconds, I can see it moving and I can move the minutes. So you ideally want to image the International Space Station when it's at its highest point, which is usually when it's passing close to the south direction. So in my case, my balcony was blocking the view, so I was only able to start imaging around this point. So when it was under the star Aldebaran, so what you want to do is uh, note, note the time where it's going to be in a convenient location for you to image, ideally as high as possible, so as close to the uh, south as possible in this case. So let's say 6.38 or 6.39 p.m. Let's say that's when I started imaging. So now I know the direction it's going to be coming from and exactly what time uh, it'll be at its highest point or when is a good time to start imaging it. So uh, I will get my equipment ready and uh, at that time I'm going to turn on my camera. So I'm just gonna go back right here. Okay, so now we know where to find the ISS. We know exactly what date and time it's going to be passing and what direction it's going to be passing in. Now, what equipment do you need to image the ISS? Well, basically you can use any scope, uh, although a scope with a longer focal length is ideal because uh, the ISS is pretty small. It's about the same size as the planet Jupiter. So if you want to see any detail like the solar panels, having a scope with a longer focal length does help. In my case, I was using a Celestron C8. I was also using a manual Altaz mount, although any kind, any kind of mount will work, uh, whether equatorial or Altaz. Uh, a Dobsonian mount in my case might, might actually be ideal. And a camera with a large sensor, such as a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera is ideal. Uh, because if you're using a, a camera with a really small sensor, such as a planetary camera, it's going to be really hard for you to get the ISS onto that small sensor. Now, the hardest uh, part for me was figuring out what settings to use because there wasn't a lot of information available online about what settings to use with various scopes. And after some extensive experimentation, here's what I've found. I was using 4K video mode on my camera for the captures, but you can use whatever video mode your camera has, uh, whether it's 1080p or 4K and your exposure settings will actually depend mainly on the focal ratio of your telescope or your lens if you're using a lens. Uh, since I was imaging at f10 at the time, I used the following settings. I was using a shutter speed of 1 800th of a second and I was using ISO 800 on my camera uh, the first time and then the second time when I was imaging with the Barlow, I was using uh, a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second and a gain or ISO setting of 1 1,600 of a second. Now, when you're using a 2x Barlow, you have an effective focal ratio of f20. And using a 2x Barlow is going to dim your image by a factor of four, which is two squared. So if you were using a 3x Barlow, it would dim your image by a factor of nine, which is three squared. So that's how you can estimate what settings to use. So for example, if you were using a scope with an F ratio of five, such as a 10 inch Dobsonian, for example, which usually have a focal ratio of five, your image would be four X brighter than my scope, which was F10. So doubling the focal ratio uh, decreases the image brightness by four, which was the case with me. So if I used 1 800th of a second and ISO 800 for my scope at F10, which was without the bar low, you would use 1 3200th of a second and ISO 800 for your F5 scope because an F5 scope is going to be four times brighter than my scope. And uh, you can also use 1 800th of a second and ISO 200 to get the same exposure time, which is the preferred option. Uh, if you can use a lower ISO, that's good. Your image is going to be less noisy. 
Now, as far as the actual capture, uh, here are some of the tips that I recommend. Uh, I recommend making sure to set up your scope uh, at least an hour before uh, you begin imaging to let the scope cool down to ambient temperature. And step two is to align your finder scope to your telescope. Step three is to point your telescope at a bright star and focus the telescope. Step four is once, you've, uh, once you see the ISS approaching, get ready to start your video. Then hit the record button on your camera and find the ISS in your finder scope. Move your telescope manually to keep the ISS centered in your finder scope. Now, uh, I show all of these steps in more detail in part two of this video, which is the actual demonstration of uh, when I was taking uh, all of that footage of the ISS. Okay, so that concludes part one of uh, our three-part tutorial. And as I stated before, uh, part two is the practical demo, which uh, I recorded while I was taking that footage. And then part three is a tutorial on how to actually process the data that you've gotten. So you can check out those other two videos as well on the YouTube channel. Uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing uh, your results. And let me know uh, how it goes. And thank you very much for watching.